But this is a historical event, okay? So, uh, and then, first of all, uh, let's pray. Uh, Only Father, please bless us today and also grant us your words. I pray to the men. Mm -hmm. This is what we're going to do. We're going to have uh, two testimonies by uh, Jerry and Yejin. And then I uh, will have a uh, ring, ring exchange. And then we'll have a cake and then we'll, we'll eat, okay? <laughs> All right, Jerry. Yes. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. Hello. Let me share my testimony about my engagement. So we have a common text uh, for our marriage uh, engagement. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 32 to 33 says that this mystery is profound. And I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself. And let the wife see that she respects her husband. Uh, so I, I'll put two more texts here. Uh, Ephesians chapter 531, which was uh, the verse right before it says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And Jeremiah chapter 29, 6, 7 says, Take wives and have sons and daughters. Uh, take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters, multiply there, and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you in exile, exile, and pray to the Lord on his behalf. For in his welfare, you will find your welfare. This is my testimony about my perspective, plan, and vision for my marriage with my dear fiancé, Yejin Moon. This is a big change to me. For the last 29, 29 years, I was always consistent about my marriage plan. I wanted to remain a single man. My favorite verse about marriage was 1 Corinthians 7, 8 says, it was Paul's concession, not a command. He said, to the unmarried and widows, I say that it is good for them to remain single as I am. I highly <laughs> valued singleness. In fact, I still do. Now I made a decision to marry, but if someone intends to pursue singleness, I will always encourage and honor one such a decision, such as Paul did. Uh, then you may wonder why I suddenly changed my point of view, which I kept for the last 29 years. I will explain this. However, to explain that, I think it is necessary to explain why I wanted to remain a single. Uh, from my age 15, I deeply respected the physicist Sir Isaac Newton. As many people know, he was the one who established the physics in the modern and rigorous sense. I don't know if he was a genius, but apparently he worked so hard and he could describe how the world operates in the language of mathematics, not depending on the motions of angels or philosophical or religious explanations. He was my hero. I wanted to explain how the world operates as consistent, confidently as he did. I wanted to be like him. I found the source of his intellectual energy in his singleness and his devotion to knowledge. He didn't even have a single date with a woman. In his free time, he either played alchemy or calculated numbers in the Bible. What a wonderful and proof life. <laughs> and about the same time, I started to read the Bible seriously and got to learn the life of the Apostle Paul. His life fascinated me. He traveled so many countries to spread the gospel even though he went through many dangers and wrote many letters full of great insight and wisdom. He was staying in prison a lot. His life was full of adventure, perilous challenges, pioneering, and then bearing lots of fruits of believers. Apparently his life was in too much uncertainties, too many travels, too many jails, uh, dangers, so it didn't make much sense to marry for him. Thus he never married, but he had many spiritual children. He became a big father of many. What a marvelous life. He is another hero of mine in the Bible. Therefore, I wanted to imitate them. I wanted to have adventurous life full of peril and wonder as a single man to be as productive as Isaac Newton in science and as Apostle Paul as a believer. This perspective was with me almost always until the last year. From now on, I will describe what changed my mind. Miss Moon, Miss Yejin Moon came to Yobai as a master student in Kinesiology in 2011. 
I got to know her by helping her settle down in Champagne, by giving her a ride for grocery shopping and so on. Then, next year, 2012, I taught her how to drive a car using my car with a, the manual transmission and she could run fast. <laughs> <laughs> then, I became a very close friend to her. Then soon later, Nicodemus and Yejin came to my home to clean up my apartment according to the direction of Dr. Sam. <laughs> In this process, she showed great care about my home and I started to feel affinity to her. Also later, we worked in Sunday worship service together to disassemble the sound system and carry them back to my home mm -hmm. because we used to carry things together. We had lunch together many times. We had other occasions to be together. I started to feel that she is more than a very close friend of mine. However, I didn't consider her as my girlfriend. Anyway, I never had a girlfriend in my life and I <laughs> didn't want to move into dating since I didn't like the idea of worldly dating. As a Christian, I was supposed to get to know a woman only by a biblical way, which is definitely not uh, worldly dating. It is okay to do church activities together in public places with others, but meeting privately for something other than the church activities could lead into dating. It is very important that Christians are supposed to meet Christians only for consideration of marriage, and at that time I wasn't convinced that Yejin was a Christian or not. She had a seed of belief, a faith, but it wasn't taste, tested yet. Her fa faith was uh, too new and her knowledge of the Bible was weak. Therefore, I thought it was not right to marry her yet, unless uh, she proved herself as a Christian. I, my emotion wasn't set up clearly yet. Uh, therefore, even though at that time I did have affinity to her, I tried not to meet her in private anymore and moved back to my original perspective to remain as a single man. However, <laughs> there were some occasions which gradually changed my mind. Number one, I had a friend of mine who knew Yejin and me well. Once he, we stopped seeing each other, he told me how good her character is as a woman who can be well considered to be a wife. His advices and explanations started to move my mind. Number two, in the last Easter conference uh, this year, Yejin shared a life testimony. When she shared it, she looked to be very beautiful to me. Her testimony revealed her character change as a Christian. Then I had affinity to her again, but this time it was a different one. It is the affinity toward a woman who changed through the word of God and grew to be a mature Christian. I could see the glimpse of possibility that she can be a wife and a mother of a family in Christ. Number three, on the other hand, I found myself in need of a suitable helper. Oftentimes, I made wrong or bad choices in my life, and I wanted someone who can tell me in those moments. Of course, my friends or my father may do so, but they are not always with me. However, for example, when I drove my car with Yejin, she oftentimes told me not to speed up too much or <laughs> go around corners gently. I found that her advice is a truly for my life and safety. <laughs> Realized that it was from her truly caring heart. She had such heart to me. Number four, oftentimes I remembered how happy I was when I was with Yejin. When we drove together to pioneer different places in Champagne, Urbana, or even run to an airport, uh, air, air, airplane museum, of course, mm -hmm. I can enjoy many things by myself. I can buy a very nice sports car and enjoy driving it by myself. I can go to a great museum and enjoy it by myself. However, I realized that I wanted to share my joy and experiences of my life with someone else. My friends can share them shortly, but they will eventually leave me so that we cannot share a lifelong journey together. Then the great joy and peace I had with Yejin gave me an expectation that I could have such a journey with her. Number five, I had a man who studied. This is a lecture series led by Dr. Robert Lewis. He talked about the definitions of a man, the wounds he bears, and how he overcome them, and how he becomes a courageous leader, pioneer, mentor, friend to others, and a lover to a woman. I liked these lectures, and then 
reconsider my idea about singleness. I realized that a married man can do also great things like a single person or even, uh, oftentimes, even greater things. Then in May this year, I was asked the missionary Grace about how I think about her. Uh, then she advised me to make my decision and let her know. And that would be a way to help her. The next day, May 12th, I pro proposed to Yejin and she admitted my proposal of marriage. Then somebody may ask me, how about my 29 years of uh, the perspective of singleness? How about the life like Sir Isaac Newton or Apostle Paul? Well, that is a good point of view. However, I chose the other way. I may not put the full devotion of my entire life for science or the gospel work. I will have to have devotion to my wife and children. Now, these are acceptable to me since I see great values there as well. Now, I will share these values in my plan and vision of my marriage. Two visions. Number one, love as Christ does, Ephesians 5, 31 to 33. Therefore, man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I'm saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. While it is possible to love somebody, even a stranger, for a short period of time, it is very difficult to love someone for the entire lifetime every moment at any occasion. For the entire lifetime, one person sees the other person's every aspect, either good or bad. Also, how can the love endure for de decades? Emotion can easily be faded away, and people change their heart easily. However, for a husband or wife, this, there is a profound mystery. The love is supposed to grow more and more and get mature. Jesus demonstrated such love while he was on the earth. He was staying with his disciples, initially complete strangers, for the entire three years. He loved them and protected them all the time. Then eventually he sacrificed his life for them, as well as for the entire human being. The Bible gave a command to the husband to love his wife as Jesus loved the church. He has to sacrifice uh, his life for her and cleanse her he has to sanctify her and <coughs> cleanse her with a word so that he might present her to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle so that she might be holy and without blemish. He should love his wife as his own body. This is for the lifetime command. In the worldly point of view, this sounds impossible. How can such devotion be possible? However, this is a mystery. Jesus demonstrated such love to us. Then when we ask, he can enable us to demonstrate this love too. I'd like to practice such love to my dear wife to be Yejin. Number two, multiply and seek the welfare of the city. Jeremiah 29, 6, 6 to 7. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you to exile and pray to the Lord on his behalf. For in the welfare you will find your welfare. On the other hand, when I look at the world, it is a huge mess. The world is full of injustice and evil. In Sri Lanka, there was a war which just ended after 30 years, and more than 100,000 people were killed. People are suffering and dying. Even now, I am not happy when I think about the injustice practiced in the world. Then how can I marry? Isn't it better to sacrifice my life as a single person, to devote my entire life to rescue justice in the world? I think this is one valid and great way of life. However, Jeremiah 29 says, uh, gave a direction to people in exile. They suffered under evil and injustice, also due to their, and their father's sins. However, the direction was to bear children, multiply, and do not decrease, and seek the welfare of the city. In the long run, this will be better for, so that they can make a new generation to change the world. I'd like to set up a good example of a new generation to fight against injustice, evil, and partiality and sins. In this sense, I don't want to be selfish in my family. I will try to be always just, not only for my family, but for the welfare of the society.
I hope that my family can be a holy church of Christ and be a source of blessing for many people. I dream that we will have fellowship with many Bible students in my family and we learn and practice justice for the welfare of the society. One word, love is the mean of justice.